on a magnificent Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon, wherever you may be in this beautiful country. It's the Night Tracks. Yes, Lord. With your humble host, Mr. Rated Extraordinaire, the teddy bear in today's artist spotlight, multi-platinum, Grammy, Emmy Award winning producer, musician, and recording artist. The legendary Mr. Narada Michael Walden is joining us today to talk about his new EP, Baby. Let's go, Lord have mercy. Not a- <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> How are you doing this morning, sir? Oh, man, I'm really excited. This is really nice to talk to you. Uh, and this uh, show of yours, I can feel the good vibration. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. I'm really happy to be part of your your fan club and all your family listeners and all your all your listeners. It's, I want to be part and parcel. Everything there you go. Good, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a beautiful experience. You have been a very busy gentleman. I mean, you just finished working with Journey, working on their new album, Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you managed to spend some time in the studio and work on the new EP. And I'm trying to find out how did you find time in your schedule to combine and be able to do everything? Well, I'm really blessed, first of all. I have to thank God for my health, you know, and, and my inspiration. And I live not far from my studio, about two miles. I can walk, you know, and then see the beautiful sea, the ocean, and walk over here. And then my engineer, Jimmy's here, or Dave Frazier, and my cats are excited to work with me. And um, it's just um, inspiration to, to do music that kind of pulls me. I can feel my fans want to hear. I can feel my heart wants to make it. I can feel that the necessity of music in life. So I'm just happy to have a, a great job. And, and I know what it's like to clean, you know, floors and windows and, and you know, empty, uh, you know, ashtrays and stuff. And I'm so happy I don't have to do that. I'm so happy right. I can just make music for a living. So I'm, it's just a great, a great delight in my life. Yeah. And what I want to say is after making Journey's album of, of Freedom with Neil Sean, which was tremendous effort, a double yes. album we made, you know, yes. during COVID. Then uh, as things worked out, uh, I came back home here to just to be around my my studio and I got inspiration to make new, new, new Narada music. So out came Baby Let's Go, boom. And I met a cat <laughs> named um, Lino out of Italy who sent me a track for a Billy Cobham album. Now, you know Billy Cobham, one of my heroes. Yes. So said, would you sing on a Billy Cobham track? I said, of course I will. So they sent me this track. I sang on it. They put it out. It became like number one uh, on the jazz charts and all that. I discovered this guy, Lino, who put it together with me, is really a great musician with his family. And his sister plays bass and wife sings and brother plays guitars and all that kind of stuff. So then I kind of bonded with him to make a new label of, of, of his family and my family, Nic- Nic- Nicolosi and the Walden people coming together to make a whole bunch of remixes of music now. He's a great right. remixer. So baby, let's go. That's how that came to be. I made my versions. He made his versions. Boom, here we are. So that's yeah. what happened. Well, it's definitely a beautiful experience and it definitely has your beautiful fingerprints over it. One of the things that I've always admired about you is that you've always, you looked at life and you've looked at life in a very special, very organic and a very treasured fashion. And we just lost two icons. We just recently lost Jeff Beck and now Tina Turner. And I know that you were very close with both of them. And I wanted to ask you, what does it mean to you from an emotional standpoint, knowing that life is so precious, but you were able to cultivate such special relationships with both of them? How does that look at, how do you look at it now going on and continuing this journey in music. Wow, man, you're really coming, you're coming, you're coming strong on me. You're coming strong on me, man. <laughs> because you know, I lost my mom like, like a few years back, and that was yes. big for me. My mom and I were so tight. I just, I just recently lost two of my brothers, Kevin and Chris, and uh, and of course Whitney and Aretha that's still recent in my heart. And, yes. then, and then Jeff coming on, and then now Tina Turner. So it's just been a lot of of of, of genius loss. However their lives have been so potent we learned so much from them they gave so much they gave everything so we right. have it to learn from and, and use and and enjoy so this is i i look at this whole thing like celebration 
there's a, there's a loss on the human level, but on the even the bigger picture, it's celebration of what they gave and what we can learn from and what we can still enjoy. So this is the page right. I'm on. I'm on a page of like, I get, to, I got to work with Jeff Beck. You know, I got to meet Tina Turner and work. I got to work with Aretha Franklin. I got to do 20 songs with, with Whitney Houston. Right. You know what I mean? 20 different things I can listen to. I'm having fun with her and celebrating with her. And uh, this is how I look at my life. Uh, I, 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 I feel very grateful. And I know that this whole gratitude thing keeps me humble, fresh, right. alive, and and eager to continue. Right. Yeah. You know, that's what I said and why I stated earlier. I said, you've always looked at life in a very unique fashion. You treasure every moment. The moment is the moment. Yes. Well, I've noticed <laughs> the moment is the moment for you. Yeah. You've been in this industry for a long time and you've seen many changes as far as publishing, streaming, labels, downsizing, having complete artistic control over your music. How are you able to adapt to now where we are and everything is being streamed now mm -hmm. and you have and being an independent artist, an independent, independent producer, having complete creative control over your music. How does that feel? I love having um, the control of the music. Uh, Prince, I'm looking at right now, um, really tried his very best to have control of his music. Yes. You know, he even at one point put Slave on his cheek because he yes. felt like a slave that he would not own his own masters. Um, in my case, I look at the half full, not half empty, how we can achieve in this new game we're playing, how we can achieve, how we can, you know, get to everybody. like. Right now, I'm talking to you, and your voice and your show will be all over the world. Right. This is the magic of technology. So I want to use the best of technology, and I want I want to spread, push love and technology, push good music, push good life, push light and God love in this technology. And uh, so I'm really challenged by staying healthy, staying conscious, and just doing my very best and trying to learn uh, from the world how we can do the good things in the world how we can use these platforms to the best uh, achievement. Yes. So, you know, I'm turned on my life. In other words, I don't want to feel like I'm, I can only work on tape. No, I learned how to work on pro tools. I learned yeah. how to work in all the different formats that are current because guess what? I want to be current. Yeah. I don't want to be yesterday's news. I want to be today's news and the future's news. Yeah. It's, yeah. Important. it's important. It is. It's very important because I know when you started, everything was, analog yes <laughs> and we had the master analog we had yeah. the master and that was a hard that was a hard to do because tape yes. is no joke it sounds genius but you got to respect tape yes you must say now nah, i got to respect pro Tools. It took a while to learn the curve of pro Tools, how to make pro Tools sound good it didn't always sound good to me so we had to learn how to bring our analog gear into pro tools so it would be warm and fuzzy you know yeah yeah <laughs> we, I, you know what i must admit i'm a little stuck back during that time because when you were using analog, everything was so raw. Yeah. It was raw. <laughs> yeah. It was raw. It was cultivated. You can tell the the amount of time and effort and patience yes. that went in there to craft yes. a particular song or an album. Yes. And now everything is more polished. What well, I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking, but it was something special about hearing some when I go back to Aretha Franklin's song, Freeway of Love. It was raw. It, yes. it was raw. And you listen to the lyrics of that song, and I find it very, very apropos in today's society because that's what we're missing, truly missing in today's society. And I wanted to ask you about that because you've always stressed about having empathy, understanding, communication, love for one another. And we're seeing such a lack that lack there of that in today's society. And I wonder if, how has that affected you overall? Well, I'm so happy I had a guru. I know this is going to sound a little crazy, perhaps, but I had a guru named Sri Chin Moy. When I first joined Mavish Orchestra, the guru really helped inspire me. He said, don't try to compete with Billy Cobham. Don't try to compete with other people. Just be the best of you. Right. And it kind of really set me free. It really set me free to feel like just love the God in your heart and heart, to be the best God lover in your soul. And so no matter what kind of comes down, I'm just always trying to be the best of, of what Narda has to do, what Michael Walden is here to do. 
and my and my mission is a little, little different than other people because right. I learned from Nina Simone when I was a little kid and Horace Silver and Cannibal Adley. I learned from Dave Brubeck as a little kid, you know. I, I learned from Ray Charles, the live album from Atlanta. You know, I learned from Jimmy Smith, the sermon. Uh, I learned from when Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix put out uh, Purple Haze, how dynamic that sounded off the radio. I learned right. from Simon and Garfunkel, how beautiful it was to hear on the radio, Bridge Over to Water. I, I learned all these things, see, and I learned like, yeah, I live in Chicago. Yeah. Peter Mayfield with the five stair steps, don't waste your time. All those great sounds they made out of the Chicago. Then the Mo then Motown with Smokey's early records. And then Marvin Gaye's early records, and then Stevie's early records of fingertips, seeing Stevie live and thin with the Regal Theater. Walk on the stage like an alien and just can control the audience with his right. genius talent at 12 years old and 13 years old. <laughs> and you've seen these things. So then when you see these things, and it, it just burns your spirit to know what the good Lord expects of us. Yes, it's a absolutely. high, it's a high standard. Yeah, it's a high right. standard, man. You know, yeah. when you see yeah. when you meet Aretha Franklin, you look in the fire in her eyes. It's a high standard. Yeah, being around Whitney, even when Mariah first came on, it's a high standard. George yeah. Michael, Elton John, Sting, Carlos, they're high standards. So, what I'm saying is, I know that my heart is here to do wonderful things because I really want to do wonderful things. I've asked God, how can I do wonderful things, Lord? So please bless the music come through and make this music have foreverness about it even whitney and i would pray how can we, we can make those songs sound good forever yeah that was our thought and our, and our prayer process you always expressed and talked about the gift and it's very few that god if god has chosen to bestow a certain particular gift you have been given that gift whitney has been given that gift prince and I wanted to ask you, because even to this day, it still bothers me when I look at someone like Whitney Houston, who had a very special gift. And I just seen her just abuse that gift. And I know that you two were very, very close. And when you sit back and you say, you know what, this is my friend, I love her. And is there anything I could do to help you? And it's like, did at any point that you feel somewhat kind of helpless because no matter what you would try to do or even try to reach out and help her, it was just, it wasn't getting through? Wow. Thank you for asking these kind of questions, brother. This shows your real love and your true care. Without I, question. I do love Whitney Houston. I was really close to her, especially in the early days. The Nard Michael Walden and Whitney Houston combination of, of energy. Birth, how will I know? Birth, I want to have someone who loves me. Where do broken hearts go? So emotional. That fire. Right. Um, you know, all the men I need and the Olympic theme song, One Moment in Time. You know, even the bodyguard, I'm Every Woman. Uh, then I even cut higher love just for her to make her happy because she wasn't happy in her life at that point with a heartbreak. So I said, what can right. I cut to make you happy? We cut higher love. It didn't really come out so much, but it was in our vaults. That's why I brought out later after she died. Right. To answer your question, after life went on with her uh, and she got deeply with Bobby and, and then her, her raising her daughter and and became really super, it was always busy. Right. I don't think the wear and tear of being a superstar in this new era is almost more than we can handle. Wow. I mean, Michael Jackson had a hard time with it. Madonna, Prince, Prince Whitney, there's only a few that went to that rarefied era of having to be everywhere at the same time. It was almost more than a human body could withstand. Yeah. And a lot of people. And there was not a lot of care around the people to make sure they're being taken care of at that type of, type of altitude. Right. That. And the, those who might be caring, really caring, might be fired along the way. Yeah. Like my I, girl Robin, I loved her. She was always at my sessions with Whitney, making sure she was all right, making sure she had enough, you know, tea and coffee and water, and got her rest. Right. So, and, but then later on, Robin here, she's she's bye bye. So yeah. I'm always saying that. Our support groups that take care of us, we need to keep that around us when we're going to those, those type of elevations of having to be everywhere at the same time. Right. Almost more than a person can 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 can, can do. Can have. Without question. Yeah. I remember you doing an interview roughly about 15 years ago, and you said everything that glitters is not gold. People on the outside truly don't understand the amount of pressure is put up on you. As you say, when you reach that rare air yeah. of being a superstar because you have enablers around you. And when you are surrounded by a bunch of yes people and don't have your best interests at heart, 
that's where the issues and that's where the problems and with you i've seen you've cultivated a close-knit circle to keep the yes people away from you and you're still here looking gorgeous looking wonderful thank you you. well i have to thank my wife paid everything my children you know kelly kayla and michael they're fresh little beings in the world uh my car band studio staff you got to come visit us jimmy Weissel and Kim Maria and Dave Frazier. You know, I have a very beautiful staff here. And um, I don't have a lot of friends. I don't need a lot of friends. I don't have right. really, really close friends. So uh, I feel like my life can be easier. I can get through this thing easier than trying to trying to bring too much. You know, just staying focused. And I got to say one more thing that's really important in my life. The love of God and just being grateful to be able to breathe. You know, just the simple things. Like yeah. my family said, did your eyes open this morning? Yes. Be grateful. Yes. See, the smallest things, man, can turn the switch to be like, yeah. wow, I get to do this. Yeah. See, I get to do this. Yeah. Every day is that a was, blessing. That, that sustains me. Just yeah. that alone. Every day is a blessing. Um, <laughs> every, every, right. every, every day is a blessing. Now, I must, I must confess, now you've... Uh, Tantalize you have you have tantalized us with this EP, of course, baby. Let's go. Right. When can we expect a full course meal thank from you? you? I'm a working whole on it now. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Teddy Bear. I'm working on it now, and I'm taking a few things from the past, kind of remaking them with Lino, who I really love this guy, Lino, and his team. They're so beautiful. Taking some of my uh, something I, re- I recorded back in the day with Sting, Carlos Santana, and Stevie Wonder, Ishmaelo, taking a song called The More I Love My Life, which I've always loved, but we never really put a big push on it. I'm taking that kind of idea, that song, and remaking it for the times now with the currency of where the ears and the people are now. Taking their vocals and things, but making the track current, hot for now. Right. Those type of things I'm doing. And I mean, I'll be cutting more music and uh, putting things together now for that. So, yes. You know what most people don't know that's really not they really don't have a clear understanding of music, but I know you excuse my French, you are hellacious on the percussions, man. You are something <laughs> you are something to behold on the percussion. When I look at you, I said, man, he reminds me so much of Buddy Guy, man. You really, you really get down on the percussions. And I wanted to ask you. What gives you more pleasure or satisfaction, working behind the scenes or actually being out and performing live? When I play my drums, that's the highest experience. Uh, when I was a little boy, Santa Claus brought me Toyland drum sets. Oh, wow. And the heads were made of paper. So the, <laughs> yeah. the, heads were, the paper wouldn't last very long. It would be like remember. five, ten minutes before it break. <laughs> yeah. me, I, it'd be orgasmic. Right. For me. So I still get the orgasmic feeling playing the drums. Right. right. Yeah. And then I was trying to bottle that orgasmic feeling into the studio. Like to me, making I Want Dance When He Loves Me for Whitney is like or- bottling the Mahavishnu Orchestra orgasmic cosmic energy into a pop song. I kind of feel that spirit. Okay. So when you ask what I enjoy, I probably play the drums is like, it's so immediate. But I very much also enjoy writing a hit song, producing it, and working that way too. But as far as just immediate height, playing a drum i can just immediately go there man because like i said i've seen and by the way, you mentioned buddy miles yes hey man big inspiration <laughs> in my life big inspiration <laughs> in my life uh i was studying his double out live album with charlie carp on guitar who was 16 years old stan the hunter on uh, alto sax and you know he didn't dig it didn't do didn't do didn't didn't get he had a piece called joe tex i really love buddy you know and also with a band called electric flag he sang a genius jam called uh texas a blues and you know and juvenile is easy and with mike bloomfield that was a that was a really really progressive band in a pop soul uh, environment so i've learned a lot from buddy miles and of course i think got with Jimi hendrix and did the band of gypsies oh, that was goodness. like you know mm. like you know monumental Yes. Okay, yes. Jimmy had a lot of white fans around the world, but he didn't really crack the black people that he wanted to get until he brought Buddy Miles in there with Billy Cox. Then all of a sudden it's like, uh oh, you know, black people are like this is our music now. Yes. So, and that's what Jimmy wanted. He wanted everybody. Band of Gypsies, one of the most yes. underrated bands okay. in history. That man, yeah. that whoo, that yeah. power trio was something yeah. else, man. Yeah. That's that right. power trio was. And for those who are tuning in late, shame on you. But the Teddy Bear does forgive you. We're being joined, of course, 
with the legendary Mr. Narada Michael Walden. Of course, his new EP, Baby Let's Go. It is available as we speak. And to get all the latest updates, make sure you stop by his official website. That's at naradamichaelwalden.com. Come. Are we expecting any upcoming live performances or tours soon? Uh, I can't say a, a definite one right now. Um, I, I just finished what's called our Spring Fling the Strings for my foundation. I take all the young singers around here, all the talented young kids who were really got a gift, and I take them on the stage and I put strings with them and they learn James Bond themes. They learn, they learn Stevie Wonders uh, by Sharia Moore. They learn Bird Backrack. Uh, wow. In honor of him, they learn, you know, like uh, even Sarah Vaughn. I make them go back, man. So that that's we just finished that. Now we're taking that footage and we're mixing it so we can have a movie and watch it back and go, wow, we're really taking these kids further. That's what I really enjoy doing too, is making new, new talent in the world. Right. Without question. Yeah. You have a gift, why not spread it? Yes. The youth is the future. The only thing I'm curious, really curious, but I'm so you've done so much. And I look at it in so little time because everything passes by in a millisecond. I'm surprised that you have not done a memoir yet. You have so much to talk about. I mean, people truly want to know what goes through your mind and your life experiences. And I'm surprised you haven't put a memoir out yet. Well, you you just hit it, man. We're doing it right now as we speak. It's, okay. So, yeah, uh, I brought a cat. Um, actually, at my studio, I first started with Kimry. Kimry is okay. my assistant and works the studio. So we first started just like taping me speaking you know, onto the, the, the tape recorders and the, and the voicemails of my early life, as much okay. as I can remember about early childhood and just going through all that, that I can just get it all out. You know, even up to like, you know, like then joining Mavish Orchestra up to like 20, 20 years old, 21 years old. So then I'm bringing in now the guy named Richard Buskin to really help me squeeze all the juice out of the lemons of those early years, because that's where so much really happened that really formated my, my life. And then he'll take on to the Ma Vishnu up through Weather Report, up through Tommy Bolin, up through, you know, all the, all the fusionary period into then crossing into Stacey Latizal in the, in the Sticky Flag, and Angela Bullfield, Phyllis Hyman, Patty Austin, Patty LaBelle, Whitney Houston, almost almost turning Whitney Houston down because I'm working wow. with Aretha Franklin. I don't want to be bothered with any distraction for Aretha Franklin now. And then Jerry Cooper's <laughs> calling, no, you've got to make time for Whitney Houston. I said, no, I don't. But you know what? He said, no, you do. This is Sister Houston's daughter. Whitney, you met her when she was 11 years old on your yes. Garden Love Light album. I said, okay, well, you know, he said, he said, I have a hook here. I have a song called How Will I Know, but it needs the verses. So uh, we wrote the verses and we cut it in, in, in a day and I went to New York and met her. Then I got knocked out. I saw what was going to happen when I first saw her. She's 19 years old. I saw how beautiful she was and confident. I'd never seen an artist on a playback of How Will I Know look at me like Muhammad Ali. Like stare at me like, do you hear how good that is? <laughs> you know what I mean? I've never experienced them like had that kind of confidence about it. But she did, man. And you know what? That was the beginning of Whitney Houston as we know it. It's like, oh my yeah. God, what a what a force of nature. Incredible voice. But not just that, gorgeous to look at. Yeah. Her cheekbones, her fingers, her toes, everything about her was just like sparkling. But you electric, know what? Electric, electric. But the thing I get from that is, is that like you and the people on the outside look at her and say, man, she was exquisite. She was beautiful. But hearing her in interviews, a lot of times, a lot of times it came across that she didn't even realize how beautiful and how exquisite and how special she was. It's one thing to know that you have that self-confidence in yourself. But if you don't believe it yourself, it, it can be very it can be very challenging. And the thing about you, you have remained blessed because you remain true to who you are. As long as you keep that special, special spirituality in your life, you continue to be blessed. And it is an honor to have you on the show. The first time I interviewed you was about seven years ago. And this is when I was doing blog talk. And I said, we have to flip the script. We have to start doing this on Facebook because people need to really see where we're at, right? You said where we're at right now from a technology standpoint, because we can reach so many people yes. this way. And hopefully very soon you'll come down to Texas. We would love to see you perform. Okay. Me, me, Casa, Su Casa, whatever you need, please don't hesitate to let us know. And again, family, the new EP, baby, 
Let's go. Lord have mercy. It's available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. And if you're feeling real adventurous, you can always head over to Amazon. Dot com And also be sure to check out all the pertinent information about Mr. Walden's foundation. It's very special. He's doing a lot of wonderful things for our use. I mean, when I was going to school, you had band. Yes. They don't even have band in classes anymore. Elementary, junior high, they don't have it. <laughs> they don't have it. They don't have it anymore. So what you're doing is very special and very unique. Has it, at any point, has it ever crossed your mind to maybe do some college courses as far as becoming a teacher i would love to speak uh at a university if they would ask me i, I would gladly do that if you ask me to come and speak something i can do that i'm a very uh i'm a very good motiv motivational speaker Without I, I, I i draw from aretha i draw from prince i draw from carl Santana. i draw from whitney and muhammad the things i love which are all very inspirational so I would love to do more of that. And also, you mentioned Texas. If you want my band to come down and play for you, hit me up, Teddy. We'll work out. I'll, I'll come down and play a clip, play a show for oh, you. Oh, I'm. You yeah. know what? I will make that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I will make that happen because there are yeah. so many venues out here okay. that would love to see you perform. And to all the listeners out there, I've purchased a total of fifteen copies of Baby Let's Go, and I'm going to be giving them out to some lucky. Bless winners. I'm going to do that, so don't even worry, but I got you covered. We're going to be doing that today. But again, whatever you need, please do not hesitate to let me know. Love you. More or less, I respect you. Keep doing what you're doing and remain blessed, okay? Teddy, it's been a great pleasure, and I'm here for you. I can feel a real family love in, in your heart, and uh, I wish the same for you on, on every level. And look upon me and call upon me. You know, we're still young and exciting and fresh. So, you know, let's 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 keep it rocking and rolling, man. Absolutely. Hey, we're both 21, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're both 21. The legendary Mr. Narada, Michael Walden. Thank you so much, my brother. Stay strong and remain so full, okay? I will. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Here on Night Tracks Radio. Lord have mercy. It's definitely a beautiful experience and loving vibe. <laughs> and remember, family, the one that, man, it is beautiful. We, we've built such a very close relationship. As I said, I've had him on the show. This was roughly about almost seven years ago. And he is one of the most sweetest spirits that you ever want to meet in your entire life. But be sure, family, get the new EP, Baby Let's Go. And I said, I've bought some copies. So I'm definitely going to be giving them out to some winners. All you have to do is name me three albums in the top 10 that Michael worked on, produced, and he wrote on three. If you give me three, make sure you send me an email and I will get them out to you that you're going to email me at LOTL Radio the zone business at gmail.com we got you covered and remember be sure to support his group helping out the youth teaching educating music we desperately need that keep the youth off the street keep them busy encourage them help them to learn a lot better so many things to do in a positive aspect instead of so much negativity that's at his official website that's narada michaelwalden.com i want to thank Everyone, each and every one for allowing me to help you uh, tune out all the negativity and bringing a lot of positivity here on Night Tracks Radio. Lord have mercy. Stay strong.